Welcome to Sanford Flip Math. It is pre-calculus. We are working through the Demana Waits Foley Kennedy book, uh, pre-calculus book, and uh, we are deep in the throes of trig. We have worked through right triangle trig and done a little bit of work with uh, trig on the unit circle. And so now what we're going to do is focus in on uh, doing some graphing of trig functions. Now the big the big difference here, and I'm just going to kind of interject for a second here. The big difference here is when we were doing unit circle trig, uh, we were talking like the sine of 45 degrees. And uh, what we would do is think of the rotation here is 45 degrees. And so we would talk about, you know, what on the unit circle, uh, oh, that's beautiful. Uh, so we'd have an ordered pair like this. And we'd say sine is the y value, so sine of 45 is squared of 2 over 2. Or we might work from opposite over adjacent, or I'm sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, the difference now is what we're going to do is work with y equals sine of x, do a table of values, x and y values, and then from that table of y values, we're going to do a graph. Okay, so it's going to feel a little different from what we have been doing because we're use instead of looking at x and y values related to the sine of theta okay so like this would be theta uh, what we're going to do instead is start tracking y values to see what's actually going on as we move around the circle okay so it's going to feel a little different and uh, and that's okay all right so what i want to do first is uh, start looking at some specific points on the graph and then kind of go from there. Okay, so for instance, we're going to look at the same kind of values that we've been working with and uh, these are all degrees. I'm not going to write degrees a hundred times. Um, but these are the same values that we've been working with, uh, etc. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so I'm going to fill in some values. Okay, so a as we look down the list, uh, please understand that the numbers on the in the right-hand column, in the y-value column, are the same numbers we've been working with. Uh, the only distinction is, is that instead of writing 1 half, I'm writing 0.5. Instead of writing square root of 2 over 2, I'm writing 0.707. And the real reason I'm doing this is so that it's easier to graph. I actually want to be able to kind of plot these points, and it's hard for me to picture where the square root of 2 over 2 goes, or the square root of 3 over 2. So this is the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, And I'm going through 180 here and then a few more to get you to see. What I need you to see is that these numbers actually start repeating the same values. It's just negative, so, uh, and then and et cetera. Okay? So we're just going to kind of go with that. And uh, let me do a little bit of scrollage here. And so scale-wise, I'm going to make this 1 this negative one and I'm going to number out to let's let's make this 360 so 180 uh, 90 270 okay, etc and we'll uh, uh, back up in just a second and do some on the left side as well after we do this okay okay so uh, all I'm going to do is plot some points. I'll, I'll plot a couple with you, and then I'll kind of fast-forward myself, so to speak. Uh, so, for instance, looking at the top of the list, 0, 0, uh, 30, which is a third of the way to 90.5, uh, 45, halfway to 90, and 0 0.707, uh, 60, two-thirds of the way to 90, and 0 0.866, uh, 90 is 1, and then it goes back down to 0.866, 0 0.707.5, back to zero, and uh, similar kinds of numbers. Okay, so this is plotting uh, all of the values up through 360, and then a few more and as uh, you continue the idea. And so this is what that looks like so far. And then... Um, kind of popping back over here for just a second. If I were to rotate backwards, okay, so like for instance, if I rotate negative 45 degrees, well, then I'd be looking at this same ordered pair, only this would be negative for y. The x value would still be the same, but since we're talking about sine right now, it, it's going to be the y value. So uh, just so you understand, uh, I can play with the same values and do kind of the same idea going this way. 
and you'll see those same values again, only the negative version of them. Okay. And so you get the idea here. And I'm just going to kind of keep this going just a little bit longer, but I'm not going to fill in as much detail. Uh, and this is what is often referred to as a sine wave. Okay, not sine wave, but sine wave. And it's because it's, it's about y equals sine of x. So what we've just done is talked at length about where the shape of y equals sine of x comes from. Okay, I want to talk just for a couple minutes about the basic shape of this and then and some of the features of this because this is going to be the heart of what we're going to do for the next uh, few days on this particular uh, topic. Okay, and when we uh, uh, move to cosine, which will be in just a, a couple of minutes, uh, all of the stuff we're about to talk about applies. Okay, first thing I need you to understand is that this graph repeats. Okay, so that shape repeats. Now, obviously, we can't, you know, just keep going on that, uh, but here's the idea. So, notice how if I keep going, it just does another one of those. Okay, so this function is referred to as periodic. Okay, this is a specific example. Uh, it is a periodic function. Okay, I guess I don't need to keep writing periodic functions since I have it right here. Okay, a periodic function just means that, okay, that's not working for me. Okay, a periodic function just means that the y values for this function repeat. The y values repeat. The entire shape of the graph, in fact, repeats for a fixed, in other words, unchanging, change of x. Okay, so let, let's take a, a little peek at this particular graph. Now, and th this is true for y equals sine of x, uh, for, and this is considered the parent function for this, uh, and, but, uh, and then, of course, we're going to mess with it. Okay, so this is like our, our starting point. This is, this is what we're starting with. Okay, so notice how when I go from here to here, that's one full cycle. It is one period. Okay, those words are kind of interchangeable. Uh, period has to do with, uh, it, if you're asked what is the period of a function, it's that question about what is that change in x before it starts to repeat. So from 0 to 360 is one cycle, so the period is 360 degrees. Okay, so notice on this side, one full cycle still has that length of 360 degrees. Over here, if we kept the scale going, it'd still be 360 degrees. All the way to the right, if we kept the scale going, the period still would be 360 degrees. So every 360 degrees, this thing starts repeating. Well, that really shouldn't be a shock when we think about the unit circle. As we go, remember on, on the unit circle, sine is like y. And as we rotate around, when I get back to here, the y values start repeating because I'm going through those same angles. And when I go get back around again, the y values still start repeating and 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 repeating. And repeating. So that's what happens with this. Okay? So the period of a function, in this case, it is the change in x uh, for the repeat to start. For the parent function, that is 360 degrees, also known as 2 pi radians. We will be graphing in radians also, so you need to understand that all of the stuff we just did works in radians too. So for instance, instead of 90 degrees here, I could say pi over 2 radians. I could number in pi's. Okay, so 3 pi over 2, 2 pi on the other side. and, and you know how to convert, so on the other side, negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and you wouldn't have to necessarily number every single 
chunk of pi or whatever, but the idea is to number enough so you know what's going on. Okay? All right. Also up. We also describe the height of the graph. Okay? Well, amplitude is actually half the height. It is a measure of how tall the graph is uh, when you're talking about something that is bounded above and below like this. And so what we one way to do this is max minus min over 2. Okay, so let's just take a little peek at our graph. Okay, it goes up to a height of 1. That's the maximum. And the minimum is a height of a y value of negative 1. Okay, so if we were going to do this for our little equation here, it would be the maximum minus the minimum over 2. Well, minus negative 1 is 2. So for the parent function for sine, the amplitude, how tall it is, is 1. Okay? Um, vertical shift has to do with uh, if things are shifted up or down, a vertical slide. Okay, I'm not going to say much more about that, but obviously if it's the parent function, it hasn't moved anywhere yet. And a phase shift is a horizontal slide, and we'll again talk about that more when it actually happens. Okay, so just so you know what they mean, a uh, horizontal slide is called a phase shift, and vertical shift has to do with a vertical slide. That one's kind of obvious. Okay, um, one more word that I forgot to type in here, and that is frequency. That's with an E, not an I. Sorry, I tried to dot my E. Frequency. This is how often uh, a cycle goes by, and basically you can find it by just doing one over the period. So in this case, it'd be one over 360, and so and this would be cycles per degree, or in uh, in radians, it'd be one over two pi. Again, cycles per. Now remember, radians technically are not, they are uh, unitless, okay, so cycle, you could say cycles per radian, but uh, oftentimes in real life situations, uh, when we're talking about like the frequency for um, uh, like say uh, the radio or something like that, instead of radians, what you end up doing is cycles per, per second, and it kind of gets morphed into something like that, okay, so uh, so anyway, we'll leave it at that. Okay, now one of the things I need you to kind of focus in on is the basic shape of this graph. Okay, so what we're going to do is just a speed little draw of one, one cycle and kind of go from there. Okay, so I'm going to grab, oh, I don't want that. Um, sorry, let's do that instead. I'm going to grab uh, background and throw that on. And... So we're going to do just a quick shape of sine, okay? So here's what sine looks like. Sine starts at zero. After it gets through a full cycle, it's back to zero, okay? So what I'm going to do is draw one cycle, and then we're going to copy it, okay? But this is how you're going to want to get to the point where you're just graphing it like this, okay? So whatever the period is, and, you know, for just plain sine, the period is 360. I'm going to call it 2 pi this time just for variety's sake. Okay, so it starts at 0, ends at 0. Halfway in the middle of this, it's at 0 again. And by saying at 0, I mean it has a y value of 0. <clears throat> and then halfway between x equals 0 and x equals pi, or 180, uh, it has a maximum of 1. There is a minimum of negative 1, and it's halfway between here. Whoop, that is just terrible. Nice, thank you. I love the undo button. And that is a sketch of one cycle of the sine function. I'm going to do it again on the left side. Uh, I generally like to see two cycles graphed. Now, you could do one on the left and one on the right. Okay, now notice what I'm doing again. I, they don't mirror image it. Take What you're going to do is take a copy of this and just bring it over there and do another one, okay? All right, so I'll, I'll do it in a different color just so you see the distinction between the two cycles, okay? All right, so again, top, 
bottom, sketch, 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 sketch. Don't get out of straight edge for this. Uh, one more for kicks and giggles. Uh, starts at zero, ends at zero, halfway between it's at zero. At the top, at the bottom. Sketch, 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 sketch. Okay. Um, that is the, the parent function for sine. Okay. Cosine, my plan was to do all of that point plotting just like I did uh, for sine. Time is already getting away from me. Can you believe it? Uh, so I'm going to just kind of fast forward what's going on here. And uh, here we go. Okay, first of all, I'm just going to get that out of the way. Don't need it. Thought I had all of that. Okay, so what you're going to see here is very, very similar to what we just saw uh, for sine. But remember that cosine, if you're talking about on a unit circle, cosine is about x. And x doesn't start at 0. x starts at 1. So in other words, the cosine of 0 degrees is, is 1. Okay, so I'm going to go up to 1. <coughs> and then cosine starts repeating again at 360, just like sine does. It has a minimum in the middle, and it has zeros. Here, and this is the basic shape of cosine. And I'm going to do another one, just so we have more than one cycle. And notice how I'm drawing this. This is exactly how, at some point, I expect you to be drawing it. Okay, so it starts at the top, uh, ends at the top. Halfway between, we're at a bottom. Now... What's cool about this is, again, uh, again, if that's, that can be 2 pi, uh, uh, all of this works on the calculator as well. And, and again, don't use a straight edge. So let, let me just, just do a quick version of this in the calculator. And uh, so I'll do cosine since that's what we're working on right now. And let me, uh, let me just hit graph and see what happens. And shockingly enough, that is totally wrong. That doesn't look right. That doesn't look anything like what you just did, Mr. Sanford. But understand that almost always it's a window issue. Okay, so let me zoom standard. And it still doesn't look right. And so the question is about mode and does your window fit. Okay, so let, let's just do a quick little peek at this. If I'm in degrees, I need to be going to numbers like 360. If I'm in radians, I need to be going to numbers like 2 times 3.14, so about 6. Okay, so let's just peek what mode we're in. This says degrees. All right, let's pick some numbers that make sense for degrees. I'm going to number by uh, 45, so that, that kind of makes sense. And since I know it only goes up to 1 and down to 1, I'll go from like negative 3 to 3 by 1s. Okay, let's hit graph. <coughs> See, now that looks like something that makes sense based on what I just graphed. Okay. Um, Let's just do sine just so we see what happens. Okay, sine goes through 0, 0. Does a full cycle between 0 and 360. There it is. Okay. Um, just to clarify a point here. If I go to radians now. Now hit graph. Okay, that is in the math world. We would like to technically call that a jacked up mess. I mean, what the heck is that? That's called your calculator is trying to do too much. Okay, remember that radians, remember we just switched to radians, a full cycle should be 2 pi radians. Okay, so tell you what, let's do a couple of cycles. So I'm going to go a couple of cycles on each end. I'm going to go from negative 4 pi, and yes, you can type like this. Now when I hit enter, it's going to make the decimal, okay, to 4 pi. Okay, now if I'm going all the way to 4 pi, I should see two cycles on the left and two cycles on the right. Okay, here it comes. There's one cycle, two cycles, one cycle, two cycles, okay? So again, a full cycle, that's one full cycle. That is one full cycle. That is one full cycle. And then there is one full cycle. So I'm looking at four different cycles, okay? So here's that period that's right there. From right there to right there is one cycle, so the period should be whatever that distance is, and you can actually see it. Now, it's going to be a little bit tricky because when you're doing this, uh, on this screen, it doesn't come out pretty. 
So we're just going to have to eyeball it. 6.14-ish. Okay, so that's that distance. Well, 2 times pi should be 6.28. So that's that's pretty close, you know, because uh, we're not exactly on 0 here, right? Okay. All right. All of the terminology for sine and cosine uh, works uh, both ways. Uh, I have to be done, and I know that's just too speedy. You're going to have to think about... Um, how things change when numbers are inside and outside of functions with transformations. We'll talk more about it in class, and we'll see more in the next video. Thanks for watching.